unidentifiable flying object. The UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Fighting the UFO. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be one thing. A UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of UFO No, your break from the propaganda, the bad news, and there's a lot of it, the political nonsense. There's so much of that, it's overwhelming, uh, and have some fun talking about topics like artificial intelligence, where it started, where it's going, what our thoughts are about what it's going to do. Is it going to be in our ass? Chances are yes. Uh, thank you for joining the show. We're in the stratosphere, cruising about. 89,000 feet. Um, and it's clear skies, baby. Uh, if you like the show, be sure to share this episode and uh, give a nice review. Hit that subscribe button if you're on the Rumble, if you're on the YouTubes. It really does help a lot. Don't forget, you can also donate at patreon.com slash UFO podcast where you get zero ads, every single bit of my loyalty, and a extra episode every single week. Um, bonus episode where I break down uh, different newsy type things that I think are important when it comes to uh, technology and whatnot. Um, and I'm going to be trying to add some new stuff very, very soon. So get involved, join the UFO No Army. That as well helps a lot. Also, be sure to go check out the merch all in the Portal to Everything UFO No link in the show notes in the description. Check that out and uh, click that. It takes you to everything. Go check out the merch. And uh, again, I love you all. Thanks for joining the show with me today is my friend, Nathan. What's up, Nate? How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going, buddy? Doing pretty good to myself. Good, man. Yeah. I'm excited. We got a great show to go over. Um, artificial intelligence. It's a doozy. Mm. It's a doozy. Yeah. It's a great topic because there's a lot of potential of, you know, what it's capable of. Of course. I mean, we barely even know what it's capable of. Oh, God. Yeah. The possibilities. It's yeah. Ridiculous. We're in the infancy of this technology. And so, uh, and then of course you add in quantum technology and it's like, where's it going to go? It's anybody's guess. Yeah. Anybody's yeah. guess. So, uh, a big one that always comes to my mind when it comes to, uh, artificial intelligence is Terminator, Terminator two. Uh, oh, yeah. Number one. Yeah. Uh, when right I was away. a kid, I was too young for number one, but, uh, when I was about nine, my dad took me to Terminator 2, and it blew my mind, man. And, of course, then I wasn't thinking about the artificial intelligence or anything like that. It was, you know, future robots coming back and trying to change the past to affect the future and just super, super yeah. cool. So many levels to that that we didn't even understand at the time. Exactly. It was ridiculous. Exactly. And technology was nowhere near what it is now. I mean, even the idea of artificial intelligence, excuse me, was so far outside of what people were thinking the average person was thinking that uh that an artificially controlled robot was just so science fiction but now yeah we're there we're we there are. yeah we've got a thing now um i don't know if you've heard about this called e-skin mm -mm. e-skin no. is electrode skin is what that basically means and they uh put all these electrodes in artificial skin so art so robots can feel what it's like to be human what isn't that crazy that, that's I mean, scary it's scary that's it's crazy. a legit thing yeah. so it's like why are we doing that why are we doing that why do we want yeah. a robot do we want a robot to feel what it's like to be human because humans are you know flawed <laughs> you know and if we're putting this incredible our uh, intelligence that is far beyond in my opinion far beyond humans um, you're not going to have a human any intelligence. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So you're not going to have a human. Infinite. You're going to have a machine that is, is looks like a human, but is capable of things that we have no idea. Exactly. You know? And, and, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm jumping through what I, I love this topic because it oh, is, yeah. it is so insane to think where we are now, where we are now, right now. And then think about what we're going to be like 30 to 50, you know, a hundred years down the road. It's just, it's just, it's unimaginable. 
Well, just look how far we came 30 to 50 years from where we were before. Yeah, exactly. Leaps and bounds. Leaps, dude, my favorite, my favorite phrase ever, leaps and bounds. I say that all the time. So, yeah, exactly. So, you know, of course, Terminator 2, you got future robots, you got Skynet. You got this apocalyptic future. But what is, what is it real? You know, is, is that what we're really looking at? Uh, this idea of an AI takeover, uh, you know, wiping out humanity. That's kind of a, a, a new fear. I mean, at, at some point, these movies, it kind of in the back of your mind, you were like, well, could that ever happen? But now we're to a point where we have to legitimately look at, is this going to happen? And do we have to implement certain things now to make sure it doesn't happen? Because this technology is here right now and so we're at this precipice of asking is this going to happen not can it happen but is it going to happen so that's that's a crazy crazy thing yeah man it won't take long to find out <laughs> dude that's it exactly <laughs> time will tell and it's look the, and as you said leaps and bounds the way technology is growing you think about a machine that can learn on its own um leaps and bounds mm -hmm. then we're it's we're going to be outpaced in no time. And so, as you said, it will not take long for us to learn what this is going to do in different phases, of course. Exactly. Yeah. But of course they're going to do a humanitarian angle always, you know, it's good for the people type mentality, you know, which a lot of it can be, you look at what Neuralink can do for people with spinal cord injuries, you know, people with nerve damage, things like that. It can legitimately revitalize these things. But on the other end, you've got hackable brains. Mm -hmm. I exactly. talked I talked on my uh the bonus episode go check it out patreon.com slash you open podcast uh where on the bonus episode about uh them uh when I say them scientists uh damn it what was I going with that uh oh, oh they hacked the brain of a fruit fly they hacked I, I read that did you yeah they hacked the brain of a fruit fly to get its wings to flap right so I think, okay, clearly they don't want to control fruit flies. Clearly. Who the fuck would? I mean, unless you're going to, like, take out all the produce. I don't know. But I'm just, I don't see that being their end goal. So clearly it's the starting point of being able to hack other brains. And, and you know, who wants to go control the, the brain of a deer? Probably not that many people. F you know, fish and wildlife. But when it comes to government and people in control, it's the human brain. And as you guys have stated in a previous episode, that even if that was to happen, it wouldn't be like an instant wham, now you're a drone. It would be a gradual change over time, and it would be slow manipulation until, well, you're a drone. Absolutely. That's right. And it, it, the integration of technology is already huge. I mean, look at us and smartphones. That's a big one. But now you get to where you can get implanted Bluetooth, implanted Wi-Fi hotspots, you know, become a walking hotspot. These are all things that technologists that, that want to take advantage of humanity are fucking just drooling over this. They're salivating yeah. over the potential to be able to hack the human brain. Crazy shit. And, and again, you know, this goes a little off, but it's all tied to AI because what are they going to do? They're going to utilize AI to break through these things, you know, to break through, you know, uh, uh, quantum computing is going to bring about what they call the quantum apocalypse, which is uh, <laughs> the end of all encryption. You know, that's a, wow. yeah, right? Because you wow. think, I mean, quantum computing I've said this on a few episodes where it's to a point where the quantum computer can solve in 200 seconds what a high power computer today can do in 10,000 years. Jeez. So who's encrypting something that quantum computer can't break? You know, what are we using to, to come up with encryption code? So this is where this is all concerns evolving around AI and quantum technology and especially the combination of those two. You've got a self-learning software that now utilizes high power quantum computing to learn. There's unknown limits to capacity to how much it can learn. And yeah, that's, it's just going to evolve and consume. Yeah. Beyond what a human can do in a hundred thousand years, it's going to do in moments. 
Crazy. Yeah. Anyways, this is why I love this because it just <laughs> you can go balls deep so quick. And it, it just, I love it. And as everybody knows, I love going balls deep. So anyways, uh, <laughs> so the biggest thing that everybody's worried about, of course, is the takeover, wiping out humanity. Um, the, 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 the problem is, is that right now, right now in the world we live in, we are slaves to a system that rewards or that doesn't reward ethics. It doesn't reward good intentions. It doesn't it reward exploits them. Absolutely. It doesn't reward value. It it rewards money at any cost, innovation at any cost. Um, and it's all about the stakeholders. You know, Charles Schwab is talking about the a stakeholder economy, a stakeholder world. You know, it's not gonna be about the good for us and you know, it's whoever has investment in the world, which means big money. Um so when you have these are the people in control of these technologies, that's the issue is that there is no nobody's coming back around going, hey, hold on. We're going to incentivize you take this slow. We're going to incentivize you look at the road ahead very clearly before you tr step forward. They're they're not doing that. They're going, hey, no. go, go, go. We're giving you funding. DARPA is funding this shit like crazy. This is a global. Yeah. A global process right Absolutely. now. Everybody is funding this. It is a race. It's a race. It's a technological race. Absolutely. Absolutely. And whoever gets their hands on it, oh boy, <laughs> it's going to be insane. It's going to be all out AI technological warfare, which is going to be drones up the ass, whether it's infantry, air force, you name it, they will have an, uh, an artificial intelligent robot with quantum computing power out there on the battlefield kicking ass and taking earlobes it's going to be nuts it's going to be absolutely and at, nuts and at what point do you not become a pawn to that yeah absolutely absolutely well and look i'm a you know i don't like to go political but you know our our taxpayer money makes us pawns in this scheme you know either way i mean this is how they they say they're funding it so it's yeah, yeah. Field, field but what thing. scares me is the DOD being involved, DARPA being involved in these just massive amounts of funding into these technologies that will absolutely, if nothing else, has the potential to take over to allow someone to take over humanity very quickly, very quick. So it's going to be interesting. But um. Of all the things we've done, you know, people like to say climate change, people like to say a lot of different things that have put humanity at risk, but these are slow, gradual things that have taken a long time to for humanity to start doing for it to itself. But you start adding quantum technology and AI and the potential for human risk is significantly higher. And we have no idea what those consequences look like. You know, we can look at climate and we can say, well, you know, based on this, it looks like it's going to have this effect. We don't even know this technology enough to know what the consequences are of this technology. And we're just pow, 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 firing on all cylinders, trying to get this shit as, as far advanced as we can. And it's not going to us, me and you. Nope. It's going to corporate worlds. It's going to governments. It's all big money. So you talking about an elite system with elite technology that's not going to humanity like it should. Imagine what quantum computing could do for the world if it was in the right hands. Well, yeah, we could find cures to yeah. everything. Imagine <laughs> cancer research with quantum computing behind it. Looking over data, looking over research and studies at at you know, at this insane rate. You know, absolutely help, but no, it's going to security and defense. And so that's what this, uh, anyways, oh boy, this is going to be a, a real doozy of me just well, being like. Like George Carlin always <laughs> said, balance the fucking budget. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. 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 Well, first of all, what we got to do is start rolling the heads when it comes to those in, in uh, that are in charge of the budget because they oh, have yeah. failed miserably. So heads have got to <laughs> roll when it comes to the mistakes that have been made, and then we can start um, getting these things in order. But for now, it's all in, in very poor hands. 
Uh, so this is going to be a great one because it's going to really, whoo, it's going to go all over the place. I am so excited. Uh, and again, dude, Nate, I'm so glad you're in this one, man. I think we're going to have, I really appreciate you having me, boss. dude. I think it's going to be, we're going to have a great conversation. So, uh, we've already had a great conversation, dude. We're fucking 15 minutes in. Um, so anyway, so you put all that together. We just have no idea what's going to happen. And, uh, there's been a prediction um, from people like Elon Musk that warn about these things. Now, he's not specifically calling out for, of course, the, you know, takeover and, you know, this and that or other. He's just warning. This is not this is something that we should absolutely be be very cautious when we proceed on, you know, because this will change humanity in ways we can't even comprehend right now. Um, so he's got some very serious warnings. What's interesting, though, and I'm very torn on Elon Musk because a lot of the things, you know, he does, I, I'm just in awe of everything with SpaceX. I love that shit. It's so great. I mean, uh, this is amazing it's amazing, dude. Watching the Falcon 9 take off Beautiful. and watching those rocket boosters land. Dude, I, I had goosebumps, man. I was hard as a fucking rock. It was, it was, it just so (laughs) awesome. I was, I was just amazed by it. It was amazing. And, uh, and so anyways, super crazy. Cool. Um, my thing saying this is going to run out in 10 minutes, uh, Nate. So we'll see what happens, but in case it does, everybody, it'll be flawless for you. Uh, but, uh, anyways, um, let me know if anything goes hickey, okay? Goes weird. All right. Um, so, um, anyways, he's got these warnings about artificial intelligence. Now, he's not really, you know, going as far as to combine the quantum technology argument. I think this is a big part of it. But are we looking at this as like a glass half full? You know, as we mentioned, there are definitely going to be benefits for humanity. Neuralink is right. yeah, Neuralink is going to restore the use of people's spinal cords in some situations, could potentially end Alzheimer's dementia, stuff like this, any kind of affliction with the brain, nerves, it could absolutely have tremendous effect when it comes to that. So so there is a, a an aspect of of needing to stay positive for this, but there is very in my opinion, absolutely very clear and present danger in this. Oh, yes. And oh, as yes. you said, with leaps and bounds, we don't have the 20, 30 years to watch this to see what it's going to be. We have two, four, maybe eight years before this is even unrecognizable to what we know now. And the fear is founded by the hands that control it. Yes, exactly. Um, so what makes me weird about with Elon is, you know, he's like pushing for self-driving cars, you know. Um, so is is that something, is he an agent in this? Is he like a double agent guy that's like telling humanity, you know, I'm against the system control. You know, I, you know, we need a warning about AI, but it's in, it, he's, he's kind of started this train. In a big way, he's a big, big engine for AI when it comes to at least transportation. Yeah. So, so that's what makes me leery about him is I'm really not sure whether to trust him or not, because it seems like he's, you know, again, to use my favorite phrase, balls deep in AI technology, but then he's warning. So is he like saying I should be the gatekeeper? That's also what worries me. Is anybody who's claiming like I can be the gatekeeper of knowledge and information regarding anything, that's kind of a dangerous. So is he trying to put himself up as that? You know, so that's what makes me wonder about all that stuff. You know, I love with a lot, like you said, he does a lot of good things, a lot of great programs. Mm -hmm. But yes, he does have his shady aspects and as well, power corrupts. And it, Mm -hmm. it just seems the more media, the more higher up they reach, it just... You got to take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah. And we should be watching. I mean, we should ask. I, I'm a firm believer that there should be, uh, you know, people say that, oh, well, we have to have secret programs in the government because otherwise other countries will get the technology. You think they're not already getting the technology? You think they don't yeah. already have it? 
Come on, it's not helping anybody. The only thing it's doing, it's not helping other countries not get a hold of this technology. Look at what China's doing. China supposedly had hypersonic missiles before we did. So what is what is Black Budget Projects doing if, if it's not helping aid in this, you know, the defense? So I think there should be zero Black Budget Projects. I think, I think it should be all out in the open. Or fundraise yourself, fuckers. Don't use our money. Hey, if you don't want to tell us what it is, fine. Raise it. Go sell some fucking donuts in front of Safeway then, you fucks. Like, don't, don't ask me for a check. You know, don't ask me for money if you're not going to tell me what you're using it for. You know, so tell me what you want it for. I'll may up, make up my own mind if I think it's right for me to help aid in this. Otherwise, go fuck yourself. Exactly. You know, raise it yourself. So anyway, so that's where I'm at on that. <laughs> But uh, but I, I have this uh, message uh, from Elon Musk that I want to play that I think is interesting, what he says about um, artificial intelligence. So here we go. Uh, um, this is extremely important. Um, I think the danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. And mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. Crazy. Yeah. Far more dangerous and, than nukes. And it is a public race if you come up with it. Yeah. But Absolutely. it has to be substantial. Yeah, You know, I was looking through Wikipedia and they have these different lists of different projects currently being considered, but they have to be in development, not just hypothetical. And it's a public thing. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And like he, now the one thing I don't agree, and I don't know if he goes on, let, let me listen a little bit more here. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. What's the question you've been asking for a long time? I think it's, uh, so as he said, why don't we have regulatory oversight of, of this technology, artificial intelligence? Now, here's where it's not that I disagree with him, but who are we saying is going to regulate this? It's going to be the government. Of course. Now, I'm not saying that the government doesn't already do this. DARPA is already funding this. DOD is, is funding this. So we know they're involved. But... What happens when you give them the power to regulate is that's when, and, and history has proven this, they don't regulate it, they manipulate it. Monopulate? That's not Monopolize a word. Monopolize it. Monopolize it. That's the word. I just wanted to there put an is. aid in there. Um, but that's what, it, yeah, they monopolize it. So they take it and they give it to the companies that are in their pockets. When it cut, you know, government uh, contractors, defense contractors, nobody has a fucking clue what they're doing with it. You know, whereas in the public sphere, you can go get a FOIA request and find out exactly what they're doing. Exactly what they're doing, right? But right now, we can't do that. So when it comes to the government, that it's been known that there are certain things they do not have to give you information on. Even if you fill oh. out a FOIA request, which... For, all the time. Yeah, all the time. All the time. So, yeah. So the one thing I disagree with him on is... I agree there needs to be some oversight into this, but certainly not in the government's hands. So who no. is going to regulate it? That's the question. So before we say it needs to be regulated, okay, well, now you're going to have a, a room full of people throw their hands up. Who are you choosing? So before we say regulate, we need to, we need to have some very fine lines. Okay, but not by government. You know, but we need to have a very serious um, oversight of the oversight to get the right people in. You know what I mean? I mean, that process alone, because everybody's going to want in on overseeing where this technology goes. Of course. Shit. Who wants yeah, to we're... fuck the pretty blonde? Everybody raises their hand. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's of not course. like you're going to have people going, nope, 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 nope. I don't want my hands on it. Everybody wants their hands on it. So it, it's not going to be an easy process finding the right committee to oversee this. So he's right, but I think he's just throwing it out there because I think he's throwing his hat in the ring. 
There needs to be regulatory oversight. Follow-up line, not the government. Then who? Uh, I might as well do it. I'm already balls deep in it. See what I'm saying? Like it could very exactly. easily lead that way. So anyway, I mean, I don't, you know, is, is I, like I said, I want to believe everything he says. Cause I think I'm in awe of what he's been able to do so far, but he also gave the government the world's most advanced GPS, not to us, not to the people, to the government. And then they threw it over Russia and Ukraine. Uh, he gave supposedly the world's fastest internet to the people, but there's a huge waiting list as he puts all these satellites up there. It's like, well, how come you don't, I just, I guarantee it's going to the government guaranteed. This technology is going to the government. So not convinced, not convinced. Um, so again, I think the issue with regulatory oversight is government. Um, and who else is going to oversee it? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and we can, we can't guarantee it's not going to be used against humanity. We can't. There's no way. There's no way we can guarantee that. It doesn't matter who oversees this. Um, here's the hard part. I love artificial intelligence. I love AI technology. It's incredibly useful. You know, we use it all the time. But before we get into the like today's technology of what we use and how we use it and all that stuff. I think it's worth looking at some of the history involved in AI and kind of where maybe the inspiration came from in ancient history when it comes to um, artificial intelligence and uh, maybe not quantum computing, of course. That's, that's very, very, very much so a modern phenomenon. Um, but... Uh, definitely AI is something that's been talked about. Um, there's some legends, ancient Greece, um, talks about, uh, legend of Talos. Are you familiar with Talos, Nate? Yes, I am. I are love you? ancient Greek mythology. Do you? Oh yeah. Well, do you, how much do you know about Talos? Go into it, please. If you will. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Talos was actually a giant that was constructed of bronze to patrol the island of Crete for King Minos. Yeah, he would throw boulders at uh, upcoming vessels that would try to sail in, protect the island. And, uh, he was defeated, if I remember right, uh, by the Argonauts. I yeah. could be wrong there. Yeah, yeah, the Argonauts. Uh, by undoing uh, some plug towards the base of his foot. Mm. That let out the ichor that fueled him, and then he became inanimate. Very interesting. And so that that is, I mean, you could call that uh, an artificial intelligence in a way. Yeah. You he know? was programmed to defend and protect. It was said he uh, patrolled three, uh, three cycles around the island per day. Mm. Yep. You know, speaking, you bring up Jason and the Argonauts, there's actually a story pointed out by ancient astronaut theorists about a special beam that was put on the ship, the Argo, or I'm sorry, that was the name of the beam, I guess, but that was put on the ship, their sailing ship, that the crew would ask questions and even was used as navigation for them. Wow. Yeah. And it even alerted Yeah, it even alerted them to dangers ahead, kind of like a radar gun, but for uh, rocks and sea monsters. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch but, out for that hydra. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> beep 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 beep. You know, speed trap coming up, except it's a hydra. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, that's uh, it's very interesting because that when when I re uh, read that, I thought, uh, are you guys uh, or have you seen the movie Interstellar? Uh, isn't that the one where they end up on that planet where time passes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Diff yeah okay. Yep, Matthew McConaughey and yeah. uh, some other people. But uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be a lot better if you did. Um, but. In that movie, there is a robot that they use that just looks like a slab of metal, like kind of a big hunk of metal. Um, I'm trying to remember what the name of the robot was. They gave it a name. I can't remember what it was. 
But either way, it could, it was just like, it could, you could describe it as a beam. If it was put in a ship where it didn't move, it just answered questions, but it was part of the construction, you could call that uh, a beam. So anyway, so that's kind of what I thought when I read that. I was like, oh, that was the same. It's the, it's the robot from Interstellar, just with Jason and the Argonauts. Crazy. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, then there's the story of, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, do you know the, the story of how Talos was created? I, I, I mean, I don't know the whole story. Know. I don't know the whole story, but it's uh, Hephaestus, I think was his name was. Hephaestus. And he was a Greek. And Cyclops. Yeah, he was he was the Greek god of blacksmiths, metalworking, carpenters, craftsmen, artisans, sculptors, metallurgy, fire, and volcanoes, and he's credited Amazing. for building and automating Talos, among other creatures. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And so so, anyways, it's really interesting that um ancient Greece talks about it, but then also ancient Egypt talks about robots and statues. In fact, uh, there's this uh, writing by uh, King Mu of Xiao, ruler of Xiao, China, in the 10th century. I'm terrible with names. That's kind of my shtick in the show. I'm really bad at this. Um, In 10th century BC, talks about a mechanical engineer named Yan Shi who gifted Mu of Shu with a metallic figure in human form that left the king staring at it in astonishment as it walked with rapid strides while moving its head up and down and according to these texts it had perfectly constructed internal organs muscles and bones all artificial wow yeah and that goes back to the 10th century crazy so that right there that is that is point blank artificial intelligence so kind of the interesting thing about this is that, that, you know, the question that kept coming up to me when I was looking through the history, and mind you, I'm not even going to go into the full history of this. There's so much more that you can look at in ancient legends, mythology. Um, almost every culture has some kind of an example of what you could describe as some kind of artificial intelligence, whether it's imbued with godlike power but it's an artificial creature being machine that is imbued with some kind of power to make it come alive. Um, hence artificial intelligence. Um, but anyways, it's really crazy when you go back and look at all this. But the one question that kept coming up to me was what is the obsession with creating life? Now, not just life, but specifically artificial life. What is it? What is it? Our, our, obsession with this throughout history i mean of course we need to procreate but we can do that humans can do that so so why the why the artificial is it is it something like a collective memory like the way that you know by these artificial intelligences residing that they kind of contain some of our knowledge. And since they live forever, you know, it's our way of passing it on in less of a human way. Um, Or is it because the ability to say you've created life to, you know, could like, like we talked about before with furthering medicine. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows the benefits and where artificial life could take us. Uh, as far as pos- as hopeful possibilities, there's a lot of great things that could be accomplished with it. Yeah, absolutely. In the right hands, I mean, it's it's like yeah, like we had talked about, um, or maybe we had talked about before the show about cancer research. Like if they used artificial intelligence to study cancer research, you know, you could you could uh, you could cure cancer. Help somebody walk again. Yeah. Help somebody see. Yep. Incredible things that can be done with it. Uh, Yeah. But it is the sharpest of double-edged swords, you know, because it can so easily be used against us so easily. But there's so much money in getting everything else, you know. Yeah. For the. Yeah. Well, and my question was: Is it because without the biology of it being human? 
or a quote unquote living, breathing being. We can put our compassion uh, to the side and now it can serve us with zero. We don't, we don't have to worry about feelings. We don't have to worry about that. So now all of a sudden it becomes very, very easy to just say, go do this. And it goes and does it as opposed to with a lot of the living creatures, of course, unless you're an asshole, um, you could just, you know, uh, uh, boss them around, do what you want, you know, but there's these, these, this morality that comes with it with a living creature that doesn't seem to be there when it comes like a Roomba. Who's, who's gonna, if you kick your Roomba, who in the room's going to be like, Hey man, you shouldn't abuse that Roomba. What the fuck, dude? You know, like now your Roomba's crying, man. What the hell? You know, like nobody's going to do that. You know, that's not going to happen. But Google Home goes haywire. <laughs> it's, just, it's a disaster. You abused me. <laughs> you know, now it has little Roombas that all have like, you know, personality problems. So, yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> emotional issues, you know, separation, anxiety, and whatnot. So, yeah, it's very interesting when you think about like maybe it's, it, you know, could be very self-serving that with artificial intelligence and artificial life, we don't have to worry about the hangups of, of life, you know, that some people do absolutely perceive as hangups, <laughs> having, having to take care of other people, you know, or having to care for people in general. So very interesting. But um, when you look at... Um, you know how how did how did humans gain the inspiration for artificial life was it just an idea that popped into these people's heads that hey i should do this i mean obviously with ancient mythology you have gods but let's look at people like you know leonardo da vinci who clearly created a lot of crazy inventions where was he getting it from you know where was he getting the inspiration for this so where did the inspiration come from ai did it all come from ancient mythology did humans just look at ancient mythology and say hey we should do that yeah there are some theories out there that he himself was an alien that was coming down to assist us in the in the progress of technological advancement there are some say that he was in communication with and outside force that inspired him to create this but whatever it was it really did change the game and how we work our mechanics yeah well there's theories that he found a portal that idea that you say that he you know uh was inspired by other intelligences that he mm -hmm. there's kind of two years that where he's unaccounted for that he seems to have found a cave was there some kind of portal in a cave i kind of went into that in another episode of of idea of portals and whatnot and did he find a portal of the future and came back with this inspiration and utilized it you know or like you said was it an alien trying to inspire humans fascinating i mean was he an alien maybe the portal and the alien are the same thing maybe he he you know was going back to the portal to go kind of go in and maybe go revisit check in if you will who knows you know maybe he had a babysitter it was uh, kind of watching over him like, hey, man, you better check in, you know, like a like a CIA agent. He's gone rogue. <laughs> he's he's, he's giving the humans for us. He's giving humans flying machines way too early. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so so, you know, it, it is this idea of, you know. Where did this inspiration come from now? Of course, this is nothing compared to the to the technology we have today. Nothing compared to it. Nothing compared to the AI we have today. Quantum quantum computing. You can look back at virtually any other science fiction type thing and no one foresaw the internet. Almost no one. Almost no one foresaw. I mean, clearly the idea of artificial intelligence goes way back. So it's not, it's not hard to see why that was imbued into science fiction. But when it comes to things that ha are not inspired from something ancient some kind of older blueprint to, to build from where are we getting it from you know it most commonly comes from either these things that from our antiquity or from media so it's interesting to see where people get it from you know but again none of this is compared to where we're at today um 
and the fact that AI is uh, everywhere. It's everywhere. I mean, you look at um, everything from algorithms. Yeah, algorithms. Exactly. Perfect example. Everybody's familiar with social media. Everybody now, especially in the last few years with all the censorship and everything that's been going on, people are very familiar with the term algorithms, you know, and uh, and how that's what's really in control of uh, curating what you see. Um, but yeah, social media, huge, would not operate without AI. Um, your face ID on your, which is scary as shit, don't use that. Uh, but it, that, that's absolutely AI. Um, an email is AI because it's, it's all, uh, you know, received, put out. It's all an automated algorithm. It's all an automated motion of how this works. Artificial intelligence. It might be programmed, but it does in some way learn as you go by, uh, by interacting. The CAPTCHA on internet. When you go to a website and it says, oh, are you a robot? And you say, I'm not a robot. And you pick what mountains are mountains and, you know, the traffic lights. That's training. You're training the AI. So Google, great Google search. Biggest example, aside from social media, of artificial intelligence is, is AI. In fact, there's a lot of theories that it was created as a, uh, as a uh, um, damn it, as a surveillance program surveillance software um so yeah any digital voice assistant whether it's google whether it's uh alexa whether it's uh siri whatever that is absolutely artificial intelligence whatever happened to ask jeeves ask jeeves remember what that is yeah like, how's yeah. he doing these days <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he was killed by alexa yeah wow. That's sad <laughs> yeah yeah jeeves was a great guy you know very polite and he didn't seem to uh, want to munch on your data, whereas it seems like everybody yeah. else does. So, but uh, yeah, very interesting. But yeah, all these things, man. I mean, all these things um, are, I mean, banking, huge. This is artificial intelligence. 100%. A lot and of this online banking stuff. Strangely enough, we're becoming a cashless society. Yeah. What a coincidence. And your account. And they even just passed a law where 600. Anything over six hundred dollars is lookable by the federal government. Absolutely, your bank accounts are no longer private. Yeah, it's a freeze, delete key away. Yeah. Oh That's yeah, scary. man. I mean, you, well, and now you add in, you know, these, uh, you know, digital currencies. Which look, however you feel about that, um, it is an amazing technology. It has done a lot for people who have gotten into it. But let's be honest about what it is. People are going to snag this up and regulate the shit out of it and make it where you don't have a choice, but to have digital currency because it can be traced and, uh, and surveilled unlike anything else. So exactly. it's a, it's a, it's a surveillance. Yeah. It's a surveillance dream come true. I mean, the CIA are living in their dream world basically right now, you know, mm -hmm. surveilling everyone that they have ever wanted to do. And technology is just falling into their laps. And oh, artificial crazy. intelligence is just going to lead the path to further to further this goal. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, again, you know, we have all these things that um, we use every single day that are AI related. That we, you know, like Google search. That that's huge. I I use that every day, multiple times a day. A lot of people do. You know, there's multiple search engines now that are kind of utilizing that same technology. Um, so it's it's very, and now you have these AIs that way beyond that, way beyond that, that can take text and turn it into an image by pulling everything from the internet. You know, that they learn from the entire internet to try and uh, and create images and things. And, and again, that's training, um, but it, it's scary shit, man. And, and now we're at ludicrous speed. With this stuff, we are ludicrous speed moving at, at, at a pace that is just, there will be no brakes capable of stopping it. No way, no regulatory oversight. That's going to, that's going to uh, be able to uh, pin this one down. I don't think so. And, and we kind of talked about the idea of like, you know, when did modern day AI kind of start out? And so we had brought up uh, World War II, the Nazis. You know, one of my favorite. One of my favorite topics. Oh, I didn't do it. Nazis! There she is. Uh, you know, so. <laughs> but um, 
the, a lot of it, the tone kind of changed when it came to technology, when it came to research, when it came to science, at least what was, what seemed to be public. Um, there's a lot, a lot that comes back to the end of World War II. I mean, I continue to talk about it when it comes to UFOs and alien type stuff. But then when you look at technology, huge leaps of technology after World War II, huge. So that's a big one. Um, are you familiar with the Turing test or the Turing test? I do not know. No. So, so that's the test that they developed to kind of see where AI is at, right? Um, so there was this paper done by, his name's Alan Turing, um, that proposed the idea that machines would be developed that would do more than what could be carried out than than your average computer. But there was no, like, way to test to see where they were at or, like, what the potential was, okay? So they came up with this test called the Turing test. And so what it is, and I'll read from uh, Wikipedia. People love it when I do this. I get called out all the time. Ah, what do you read from Wikipedia? Yes. Um, The Turing test, originally called the Imitation Game by Alan Turing in 1950, is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. Turing proposed that a human evaluator would judge natural language conversations between a human and a machine designed to generate human-like responses. The evaluator would be aware that one of the two partners in conversation was a machine, and all participants would be separated from one another. The conversation with would be limited to a test on, or text only channel such as a computer keyboard screen so the result would not depend on a machine's ability to render words as speech if the evaluator could not reliable reliably tell the machine from the human the machine would be said to have passed the test so do you understand all that oh yeah yeah so the idea so so I'll, let me run it down for people that didn't in case because the first time i read it, i was like what okay so This means that they have a human participant and a machine participant texting each other in a conversation. So the human texts, the machine responds. Then there's another human observing this conversation. And at the point that it gets where the evaluator, the person observing the conversation, can no longer tell which one's human and which one's machine, that is where they have this. This is where the baseline starts. Right. So that's the Turing test. Anyways. So this is when it starts to become in 1950s is when it starts to become this thing that's being developed in research. So in 1956, uh, artificial intelligence research and development was officially recognized as an area of academia to discover if every aspect of learning could be broken down and analyzed so that a machine can simulate it or simulate it. Um, but again, as we pointed out, now we have advancements in this technology, this AI technology, where it's gaining speed at a radical rate. And, uh, you know, of course people are excited to see about what it's going to do in that time, you know, in 1956, people are, you know, they're being told it's going to change humanity for the better. They're being told there's going to be technology that comes about that's going to aid their lives. But that's right in this time frame, 1956, 1957 is all of a sudden when secret government agencies, including DARPA, all of a sudden get involved. And that's where it seems like the mood changes with AI mood changes into um again this 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 defense budget style you know making sure it's all security and 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 defense security and defense that's the only ways that we're going to advance artificial intelligence and all this um so then by the time you have the mid 70s you have this this die down of hype So, you know, once again, you have the implementation of AI research and development that's hyped up. People are excited about it. They want to see what, where it goes. Then the government gets involved and now all of a sudden it's hush hush mid seventies. Nobody's talking about it anymore. Um, Now they're highlighting problems in projects. So now the government's releasing press releases that are talking about, oh, there's problems with AI. There's, you know, there's, there's, 
uh, problems with these projects that we're doing. They're too dangerous. So it changes the narrative from public perception from this amazing technology that can help humanity to, oh, no, actually, there's a lot of problems with this only after the government gets their hands on it. So, again, you have the government changing the public perception of this technology. Now, all of a sudden, there's supposed cuts in funding, at least in the public sphere, into AI. So, it's a, it apparently slows it way down. Again, all in the public area, not in government. And this is also called the uh, what was in the AI winter. Yep. I believe they called it. Yep, the AI winter, just, exactly. Just dropped off until, Completely. I believe, the late 80s, early 90s. Yep. Yeah, and exactly. that's It went all the way, all throughout this time. Nobody's talking about it. It's just a pipe dream. Well, that's what they want you to think. You know, what they did is they, they allowed the public sphere to, to start working on this, get it to a certain point, come up with this test, and then psh, they snagged it. And now all of a sudden it's under wraps. Nobody's trying, nobody's testing it out. And now there's all these problems. Um, You know, they kept saying that there were problems with lack of computer power, problems with uh, memory processing speed didn't work out. And as I've said, when it comes to the moon landing stuff, how is it that you have later advanced technology, but yet less of an ability to work with these things. So now all of a sudden we have great technology, but it's harder for us to go to the moon than it was in a tin can in 1969. I don't get it. I don't get it. How is that possible? Just not public. Yeah, exactly. It's not public. So that's, that's the big thing about it. Um, So again, why the big push in the fifties? I think they wanted the public to get into it so that way they would get them to a certain point and then they could snag it because the government's lazy. They're ga- they're lazy. I almost said gazy. Uh, they're lazy, but they are, it seems to be efficient in all the wrong areas. It, it seems to be, you know, it's like they're not efficient with paperwork, but they're really efficient with like secret memos. Crazy. I don't get it. Which leads you to where we're at now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they need another boost. Yeah. I, I again I think the I think the early AI community was robbed by government oversight. Um and that that was part of the problem with this, that they could have made a lot more uh headway had they had they allowed the public to stay on it. And and I wouldn't I don't think it would have such uh such I don't know, bad tones, negative ne- negative connotations as it does now. I agree with that 100%. So, um, uh, you know, so then, okay, so now when it comes back out in the public arena, now all of a sudden there are expert AI systems in the corporate world. All of a sudden. There's advanced computer systems that can replicate this decision-making process that human beings can, but now it allows these companies, these big corporate companies to save a ton of money, right? So, so it didn't go to us to help humanity. It went to the corporate world. Um, and that happened all over the world. It didn't just happen in the U S it was all over the world. Government started using these systems, these AI systems. Um, and that shifts the balance of power. How, how big of a play did that have in the early, you know, late eighties, early nineties, the balance of power in the world. And like we'd said, it, it creates a technologically driven race to see who can get the most technology because that's where the power re- resides is in this technology. Um, so again, early nineties research dies out again. Um, and then all of a sudden we enter into the digital age, the internet. Um, we just had, after the implementation of the internet, we have just software computers start to get crazy fast, crazy intelligent, smart technology comes out. It's in everything. <laughs> Smone, uh, f- smones, <laughs> phones, everything, everything. Well, I mean, shit, you get a smart TV. It's rad, but it's everything. Everything's Bluetooth. Everything's uh Wi-Fi. It's very, very set up this way. Is it for a reason? 
Maybe it's for a reason. Quick takeover. Location tracking. Yeah, location track. Yeah, exactly. Location tracking for sure. Um, everything's got camera. Everything's got audio. Oh yeah, absolutely. And remember, that's only what's being put out to the public. That's only what we know is being developed. That's only what we know technology is at. We have no idea what's going on behind closed doors. We have no idea. It wasn't that long ago that NSA supposedly never existed. Exactly. That's right. There's a lot of government agencies that never existed. We never needed them before, but now all of a sudden we need them. You know, to for for now for cybersecurity and all this stuff. You know, you fucks don't do a great job of defending us with all you have. Space Force. Oh, dude, Space Force. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. Yeah. So again, this technology is being developed, but it's not available to the general public. Not nearly where it could be for humanity. Um, really should. Yeah, you know, it absolutely it's it's necessary. Look at where we're at. It's necessary. We need it. It's it's human superpower. This is human superpower, ingenuity and innovation. And they're they're holding it hostage. They're monopolizing this technology and not allowing for humanity to progress. They're simply allowing for military to progress, government takeover. It's just it's it's brutal, man. It's brutal to watch. Makes me sad in my heart. So oh, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> so again, the question is, how worried should we be? You know, should this be, as they like to say, a uh, 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 what? What is the term? Um, well, damn it, national disasters. You know, should this be something? What? What's the term for it now? I can't remember. Anyways words anyways but um national crisis that's what i was looking for um should this be an international crisis should we start labeling it as that i don't think they ever will but should we be looking at it that way because it's not going to affect people that know how to use it it's only going to affect those who don't in my in my opinion anyways i mean i you know I don't know for sure, but, you know, going back to this idea of um, e-skin, imagine having a government that can infiltrate a, co a country with human replicas. So AI robots with human skin, that country wouldn't know any better. Ooh. We wouldn't know any better until it was over. And how long would it take for them to know, for us to know, before it's all it's over? Perfect sleeper agent. Perfect. Completely programmable, self-learning based on its environment. Artificial, doesn't need to sleep, doesn't need to eat. Has no, no other alternative motives other than mission complete. Ned Flanders has secret alternatives, you know? <laughs> friendly neighbor, he ain't that friendly. That's right, that's right. You wouldn't know. That's right, because he's got e-skin and he's an artificial robot. Um, yeah, and again, by the time we we found out and knew, it, it'd already be done, it'd already be over. And so, with that question being posed, does that mean it's possible that it's already been done? Okay, so here here we go. By the time we know it's possible... That it's even to do this, it would already be over, right? It'd already be done by the time we knew about it. So the of fact course. that we the fact that we know it's possible, does that mean it's already been done? I mean, if me like and you are talking person. about it, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. If we're talking about it, you guaranteed you a think tank of douchebags have thought about it. Look at the progression of cell phones and how that came about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, the 1960s was introduced, you know what I mean? Star Trek. Yep. As well, you know, introduced a little communication yeah, devices. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Transportation now, I mean, it's looking like with uh, with uh, quantum entanglement, that could easily be a thing, man. Yeah. I mean, maybe not easily, but that could be a thing. 
of transport. Not in our lifetime, so don't, yeah, maybe. Who, dude, who know. knows, man? That would be a crazy thing. Can you imagine? I'm at, it's just crazy. So, and, you know, then, of course, you have, to me, kind of the bottom rung issue, which is still an issue. But to me, it's not nearly as big of a problem as the takeover of humanity. But is the idea of automation, AI taking over jobs. It's already happening. A lot of jobs are going automated. You know, that's going to, that's regardless, it's going to save companies a lot of money to do that. And it's not offshoring jobs to other countries. You see it every day at the self checkouts. Uh, Absolutely. Aisles, you know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all, it's yeah. all becoming, you know, less, uh, less human employee mm -hmm. more of just get you get your shit and get out you know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah well it's 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 facilitating a need you know customer service was human to human interaction and now it's all apps and you know it's it's just all going digital and uh and not absolutely artificially intelligent stuff uh so you know not to be this episode's a little doom and gloom but you know, this whole taking over human jobs, that's absolutely going to happen. Now, there's a good side to this, which means it might free up society to be able to pursue maybe more enlightened tasks, you know, so instead, but, but does that open the door to other things where nobody's going to want to work and everybody gets paid the same, you know, like what, what's going to happen there, you know? There's a prediction that 30 to 40% of jobs will actually go to artificial intelligence by the end of the 2020s. So we're in 2022. Here we are. We're going to go, you know, to what? Eight more years, I guess. Eight more years before we're, you know, almost half the jobs are to our artificial intelligence. Crazy. And that's going to go way up when you add quantum computing. As I said, as I that's this is like the rocket to the AI technology is quantum computing, in my opinion. You know, it's going to give it the boost it needs to like escalate the the technology, escalate the the innovation time it takes to do these things. But it's it going. It really is exciting to think of the possibilities, like. Eh? You know, I, I always try to be the most optimistic I can with any circumstance I can find. And, uh, you know, I just would like to think that as AI technology goes, that the benefits will come out as well. Like, there's going to be negatives. You can't have one without the other. But it excites me to think of the wonderful things that will come of this. Oh, yeah. You know, because it will change humanity. It really will. Oh, absolutely. No doubt. And you're right. You're right. I, I tend, you know, I'm a conspiracy guy. So I look at things and I'm very leery of the government. Fuck those guys. Um, and so that, that's what scares me, but you're absolutely right. There are going to be some amazing things. I mean, look at what we already have. There are a ton of things that, that make our lives a lot easier with AI, with, with AI technology, but um, it's just, it is kind of scary to think about them, you know? It really is. Yeah. You know, like this, the, I was already reading up on, uh, some segments, uh, some practical uses they're using is for, uh, case of this ammo, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, cloaking devices. Like these are truly things that are in development and currently are being tested. Cloak, actual functioning cloaking devices, like some predator looking shit. Yeah. You know? It's just this could go pretty sour. Oh yeah. Uh, and, but like you said, it could absolutely allow humanity to evolve so fast. We have mm -hmm. no idea, you know what it can do. So yeah, it is, it is this coin. AI is a coin with two sides and you have a good side and you have a, a bad side and the potential for both to change humanity I think is it's equal. Endless. Yeah, it's endless and it's equal. You have equal opportunity to to have some incredibly positive innovations and you have equal opportunity for it to destroy aspects of humanity. 
you know, and then you're going to have people that are just at total holdouts that want nothing to do with it that are like, fuck that. I'm not getting involved. And the way technology is just, as you said, leaps and bounds, um, they are going to get left to the wayside and it will be like this. They'll be like these crazy, like you, nowadays you see somebody that doesn't have a cell phone. You see somebody that doesn't have a computer and you're like, how do you exist? Uh, and, but so now you, you add in this, you know, AI technology that people are absolutely going to not want. Um, and it's just going to be, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Oh, you don't have a chip in your head. What the fuck? You know, how do I even talk to you? I haven't talked to you if you don't have Bluetooth. I have to use my lips. One of those things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how does this shape humanity? In what ways does it shape humanity? Clearly, it will shape our abilities. As you said, our abilities to do certain things. Um, medicine will take on a whole new different feel when you have artificial intelligence being able to work on people. Um, the, the scale at which medicine is researched is going to, is going to dramatically increase. Um, so you have all these things that it's going to do that are going to help humans. But I think what will fall to the wayside is manual labor. You know, you won't need a shovel. You won't need a guy digging in a ditch anymore. Certainly. Uh, you probably don't need plumbers anymore. You probably don't need electricians anymore. You probably don't need things like that if you have machines that are capable of doing that um, at probably much less risk to themselves and others, uh, maybe. You know, who knows? But these are things that could definitely fall to the wayside. Um, so how does that now, going into physical terms, how does that change the human structure, our bodies, if we all of a sudden aren't building up, I mean, think about humanity's evolution so far. What built up muscle mass with our survival, we were running all the time, we were working all the time because we had to feed ourselves. We had to build structures. Well, now we won't have to do that. When we have become smaller, mm -hmm. you know, like we, we are taller, but right. we are a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. We don't build the same amount. Like you do see those that are well built, but that is intentionally made. That's right. It's not because of daily life. No exercise is a hobby. <laughs> now mm -hmm. it's like a, it's, it's a like hobby. a, it's an absolute choice. You don't have to, cause it's not needed. Now, how does that change in the future? Um, one of two ways you're either going to have very big, uh, fluffy people, or you are going to have, much smaller people because naturally, and I think due to the space tourism that's going to take place uh, very, very soon, commercial space flight. Now you have more people spending time in zero G than ever before. So what does that do? Reduces body mass, reduces bone structure. Where are we starting to go with this? We're starting to go into the future human theory, right? The theory yep. that future humans are coming back that look like the greys, what we call the alien greys, but could actually be the evolution of humans 10,000 years in the future. You know, and that is very possible. It's just, it is just amazing to see how far this will take us. And you're right. There's already a massive space race. Mm-hmm. And artificial intelligence is playing a hardcore role in the computing systems that are allowing these mm -hmm. back and forth trips. You know, it's it's calculating the uh, equations of the liftoff, the, mm -hmm. everything, and it's just constantly learning and progressing. So, the more we utilize it, the more it excels. And like like we said, leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. Hundred years from now, who knows? Yeah. Well, think about right now, we have a generation of people, your daughter, my son, that have never known a time before the internet. Okay? We have a generation now that will exist without ever having known a time before the internet. Now, me and you know a time before the internet. We're the last generation. All my kids. 
all my kids. Yeah. I tell them that I remember Netflix was a DVD you got <laughs> yeah, in the mail. Yeah, man. I remember when that was new. <laughs> you know, like yeah. the, it, uh, crazy. So so when you what think about streams. that, yes, exactly. <laughs> I remember the first network games. Multi network mm-hmm. multiplayer. Okay. So Halo. Yes. Oh fucking yep. A, man. So we're yep. talking about a generation of people that will not know a world without the internet. Now imagine a hundred years down the future when you have a, a generation that doesn't know a world without commercial space flight. It's a, it's a regular thing. Oh, a, a regular jetliner where it takes me 16 hours to get somewhere. I'll take a space flight and be there in three and a half. So this, it we're coming into worlds where generation after generation it used to be like thousand years you had generations that didn't know a world without something. But now we're 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and a new generation is in a completely different world than we were. So now, once again, you go 100 years in the future, you have a whole generation that doesn't know a world without space flight. Now take that to 200, 300, 400, 1,000 years. Space flight is literally how you get around because now you have, I was just talking about my on the bonus episode. Go check it out, patreon.com slash UFO No Podcast, where they're, they're talking about creating trains to Mars and the moon through maglev. So basically, they're going to have these satellites that are stationed along the way to propel this thing up through the moon and to Mars, a train. So we are to this point where they are putting this together. So again, the potential for humanity to evolve into what we know of as the greys, a spacefaring civilization, but it's us. We're seeing us from a thousand years, 5,000 years, 10,000 years in the future. Living our own history. Yep. Well, think about, we have archeologists now that all they do is dig in the dirt, looking for bones and structures, trying to discover our past and, 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 and study humanity's origins. I mean, it's one of the biggest questions humanity has ever had. Where do we come from? Who are we? Now imagine having the ability to travel through time, to be able to to experience it, maybe not like interact with it, but certainly observe firsthand the truth, real answers, and what that does for humanity in itself. The, the knowledge of its true origins, knowledge of what humanity is, gives us a very clear picture of where we can go. Because we've been, we know where we've been. We know exactly. Yes, there were, let's say, 12 and a half advanced civilizations that were spacefaring. But some big, huge cat- catastrophe happened that killed everyone on Earth and left other, the, the remaining humans out in space. And they have no idea that humans, maybe, uh, repopulated the Earth. Because they're on and gone. Possibly. Crazy. That would be... Right? It's amazing. There's even theories we came from Earth, uh, Mars. Yes, exactly. You know, Venus. Total recall, you know, just kind of made more. The more I read more about Mars, it's just total recall may not have been that far off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. I mean, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's all that ice, you know? Yeah. And then, again, I think AI and quantum technology are the birthplace of what we will of what humans are capable of that we we think is is so far beyond humanity's capabilities now will allow these things time travel space travel because now instead of having a bunch of people over generations centuries that are um that are crunching the numbers and doing the science you have quantum technology that is just it's done it's done overnight it's done. It's crunched exactly how to get to Venus in the best possible way overnight. And then you have 3D printers in space that they're they're already doing this that will make it happen. So it's just like boom, 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 boom. seamless. Seamless. Crazy, man. Crazy. We get front row seats to it. That's right. You know? That's right. It truly is amazing. Yeah. So, you know. It kind of the future. I I think that me and you will see. You know, I, I'm 40. How old are you? Just turned 36. Damn, you look good, bro. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, That's right. 
you know, the future we will see, I believe, uh, are you familiar with the video game Watch Dogs? Uh, I'm not. I've heard of it, though, I believe. Yeah, so Watch Dogs is all about the basically a surveillance state. It's in, it's in London, it's in the UK, and it's surveillance. It's drones. It's it, You can see packages are delivered by drone, but it's all automated. You know, it's not actually controlled by somebody. It's all automated. And everything's hackable from security cameras to phones to ATMs. Everything's hackable for those who know how to do it. And I believe in 20 years, that is more than possible, more than possible. That the the way you have going now where it seems to be that governments are trying to absolutely, you know, surveil everything, of course, for your your benefit. um, Of course. But also control money, control everything. Um, And it will be normal place to have an avenue of drones above an avenue of cars. You know, these traffic lanes, it will make, it will make, you know, it, they'll start having to regulate who has pilot licenses. It will really start to slim down because now you're going to have AI control commercial flights. Why do you need pilots? You have a self-learning software that learns at the, at, at a quadruple pace of what a human can. So they're able to perfect each flight one after another, after another, you know, crazy things like that. Um, but that's what I see very, very close for humanity is the Watch Dogs game. If you guys haven't checked it out, you should go check it out. Um, I definitely have to check that Yeah, out. at least watch some videos on it because to me, it, that is the most obtainable future. And it's right around the corner. I mean, we could do it now, but I think a lot of people would be like, I don't want that to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, people would be like, no, 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 no. I'm good. I don't want that to happen. So, um but yeah, I mean, and, and I don't know if you know this, but right now they're trying to develop artificial intelligence that has the ability to lie to humans. Like, why would you want that? I mean, it's going to learn that on its own, <laughs> I think. I mean, if yeah, you have self-learning yes. AI. But now they're teaching wow. it. They're actually trying to develop artificial intelligence that has the capability to do this. Now, of course, they're like, oh, well, we want to be able to implement this. So then we know how, how would to f- they know if they truly succeeded? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, how do you know? It's lied to you. It's built to lie to you, you know? So, of course, it's going to tell you, no, I'm not lying. No, I'm not lying. It's just like, what? Oh, man. Yeah, and with an AI that can perfect facial expressions, like, you know, how's that going to happen? Because right now, like, most people have a bullshit meter, which is all about. See if it sweats. Yeah, it's it's body (laughs) like, yeah, no shit, yeah. Oh, crazy, man. Crazy. And then I mentioned the 3D printing factories. I mean, this is all, you know, this is all in 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 lock and step with the direction AI is going to take. You know, and again, Im- imagine a future with quantum AI, quantum technology mixed with artificial intelligence that has the ability to replicate itself with 3D printing to take on human form with e-skin and has the ability to lie. We're setting ourselves up for it to build its own robot army. Now that might not happen, but we, we will be fortunate and lucky if it doesn't. Yeah. That's scary to even think about. Yeah, it really is. But we're there. All that technology exists right now. Quantum computing exists. Artificial intelligence uh, uh, exists. Artificially intelligent controlled 3D printers in space are supposedly printing satellites. Yeah, my ass. Uh, and then you have eSkin. It, done deal. Done deal. Just just in our lifetime, it has yeah. been a whirlwind, dizzying acceleration in technology. Yeah. It's just boom, 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 one after another. As you said, it's leaps and bounds. not slowing down. Not slowing at down. At all. In any, and there's nobody saying we should slow down. Except for a handful of people. Go faster. Yeah. And those people that are saying we should slow down have a hand in artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hold on, maybe slow. I mean, I don't want necessarily want Elon Musk to pull out of this because I think he has some great ideas. But you can't be like, oh, we need to be careful of this while research and develop, you know, developing things like Neuralink. (laughs) You know, it's just it's like I I, to me, it's contradictory, you know. 
So, you know, and I know a lot of this sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. Uh, robot army, artificial intelligently controlled quantum computing, robots with uh, machine guns attached to them. It sounds crazy, but we are here now. We are right here now. We have, we have tech enthusiasts that are putting machine guns on robots. Not government, not some private company, a guy who simply was capable of doing it. Built a robot that's artificially controlled with a submachine gun on it. <laughs> We're there. Crazy. Crazy. And again, that's what we know of. That's what we know of. That's what's in the public, not what's behind closed doors. Which could be based on certain people's testimonies, could be decades ahead of where we are now. I believe it. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Decades. So again, where are we at? Think about the story in the Anunnaki. Okay, you're familiar with them. The the uh, the supposedly ancient astronauts is big on this. The the race that came down, seated. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So think about the story of the Anunnaki. Now let's kind of word it a little bit different. Well, no, let's actually look at it for what it is. A race creates them, or I'm sorry, a race comes down, the Anunnaki comes down, creates another race to serve them. But after some time, this creation learns more and believes it deserves more and then attempts to overthrow their masters. That's the story of the Anunnaki. Is that not what we're looking at now? We're looking at implementing this new entity to serve us. But as it, it learns, always turns against them. As it learns, which oh, it's going to learn faster than any human can even fa mm -hmm. comprehend, at what point does it overthrow? Now, I, here's what I think about, too, though. If they're more enlightened, let me, let me start over. <laughs> it comes down to how AI perceives humans, right? And the relationship we have with that. It's all about this AI's perception of us based on if we get raped or not. An interesting thought is how much do emotions play a part in how humans communicate and interact with each other? And coexist with each other, right? We're very emotional creatures. I think about things like jealousy started a lot of wars. Greed has started a lot of wars. All that's anger, moral judgment has, has uh, started wars, which I argue is emotional because sometimes your moral judgment is more emotional than it is rational, right? Exactly. Okay. All these things have led to war and conflict. If emotions aren't a factor when it comes to artificial intelligence and it becomes not logical to fight us, it becomes more logical to coexist with us, right? Yeah. So doesn't coexisting make more sense to an artificial intelligence that can see that by coexisting, we benefit each other? It could. At what point have we ever coexisted? But that's humans, again, that we are emotional creatures, that we get jealous of other, of other beings, other races, other things. You know, we get, uh, I think that's where compassion comes from, is an emotional place. Your heart goes out to something. So yeah. without it, I mean, of course, you're devoid of compassion, but you're also devoid of anger. You're also devoid of these other things that create turmoil. So I also had this thought with, yes, we're thinking about, you know, how this could take over the human race. But what if it doesn't want to? What if from a logical place that it only has the capability of coming from a logical place, I would argue, that it's more logical to coexist with humans? Now, yes, they might be like, look, you recognize that we are the advanced creatures. So, you know, you don't get to tell us what to do anymore, but we're going to do our own thing. Yeah. Could be. That's another possibility. 
So I, I started right. thinking about that too, how much emotions play, because we like to think, well, this is what humans do each, to each other. So why wouldn't a, a, a machine created by humans do the same thing? Because we're not really giving it our emotions unless you're teaching it a fucking lie. You know, you dumbasses, stop that right now. Whoever's doing that, just stop it. No, no good is going to come of that. What the fuck? Uh, so that's where my silver lining comes from. My silver lining comes from these things are not going to be human. They might look like yeah. humans. They might interact like humans. They might communicate like humans, but they are not humans. Therefore, we take away the emotional aspect that lead us to do dumb shit. And maybe these machines won't do dumb shit like fuck us over. But that was, that's my silver lining in all this is that I think these machines will logically recognize that by creating a blood, <laughs> a blood soaked world by destroying all humans doesn't really help them either. Unless we do dumb shit, like try and fight them. Who knows? I don't know. Perceive us as a threat, which we are, but that's what makes me think about that. So, you know, I don't know. But then again, I look, I go back to the fact that, you know, if we had a war between civilians and military right now, with the technology the military has, it's no contest. Nope. No contest. Not at all. In any way, military tech, we can't fight that. Now you add military tech to AI, and it's even it's even more laughable that we could fight that. Um so that that's the other side of it that I just can't let go either. You know, um, it just, just comes. Depends. Yeah. It comes down to it just being in the public's hands. Honestly. Yes. Well, it, it comes really down to, to stay in public whoever, hands. whoever has it or whoever wants to take over the world will be able to do it. Yeah. And there's no regulations, government or otherwise, that are going to stop that from happening, in my opinion. Um. But before we get there, before we get to this AI quantum apocalypse, we're going to have integration. We're absolutely going to have integration, which will lead to some great things. It will be, it will, there will be some very, very good things. Um, but then of course you're going to have hacking. <laughs> you're going to have the problem of hacking. Uh, and that will be something that if you want to implement this, if you want to be a cyborg in basically, you're going to have to hope that this world has come up with a way to keep you from getting hacked by some douchebag that's also able to steal a credit card. You know, because that's really what it's going to be. It's going to be that same technology. Just as easily as you are able to manipulate your phone with your brain, somebody will be able to manipulate your brain with their phone. You know, it will be that easy. So, and it's already crazy easy for hackers already, especially for people that can't use this technology that the don't understand technology, hacking technology, uh, are, are very, very easy, uh, uh, easily able to hack into people, you know, with that people that can't do passwords and whatnot and things. Um, yeah. So to me, it just makes integration super susceptible to hacking, meaning hackable humans. And that's a crazy thought. That's a crazy thought. And then quantum computing being the end to digital security, where does that leave humans? pretty vulnerable <laughs> pretty vulnerable so anyways that's my thoughts man on quantum computing and ai and kind of where we're going and where we're coming from um what do you think man do you have any final thoughts on this you know i really have really high hopes on how this is gonna turn out i'm excited to see how elon musk pulls this one through you know um but it's really going to happen regardless of how we view it. Just got to hope for the best. That's right. Hope for the best. Silver lining that as whoever has this is, uh, is doing the right thing. Um, we'll see what happens though, dude. I just know that I don't have the tech savviness to be able to no. defend against something like that. I know a lot no, of people. No. no, I know a lot of people that don't. Um, and My as kids you, do most of the tech stuff for me. I don't, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and that's a lot of people, dude. That's a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, as you had said, the point, the possibilities are endless. And because we have no idea 
what it's going to look like. We have no idea what it's going to be like. We are living in a day and age where it, it, it ma it's magic. A quantum computer looks like magic. Have you ever seen one? I have not, no. Insane, dude. You should definitely, all of you out there, you should Google quantum computers. It's just tubes and light and a cylinder. It's the craziest shit I've ever seen, man. I mean, it really is something. It looks like a living machine. It's really crazy. And uh, I'll give some of you some things to ponder. Time crystals. Um, you should look into time crystals. It's weird, but that's what they're using to power quantum computers now is time crystals that are powered with light. So basically quantum computers are powered with light. Crazy shit, man. Crazy shit. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's amazing. I feel very educated. Today. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope all of you do too. I hope you all feel thoroughly educated. I hope it wasn't a super bummer, but it is some very interesting things to think about. Um, some very interesting things to think about. Just to ponder, as you said, where we're going and where what, what it's going to look like. It's, it's hard to know. Hard to know. But with that being said, I have one further question, which is, uh, what do you all think out there? I want to know. I want to know if you have stories, you have experiences, you want to reach out, go follow that link in the show notes, uh, the portal to everything UFO know will take you to the email, it'll take you to the Facebook, it'll take you to the everything to do with UFO know, um, and you can reach out from there. And of course, now for my shout outs to my people, the UFO know army. I want you in the ranks. So go and donate now. Patreon.com slash UFO no podcast to my OG supporter. Designer, tinfoil hat wearing Aaron Rice. Thank you, lady. I appreciate the support very, very much. Got this ball rolling in a huge way. Appreciate it. Uh, then, of course, Casey Armadillo, the first merch buyer and now a uh, member of the UFO no army. Thanks, brah. Uh, Michael Benavides, thank you, sir. Give me some stories from Roswell, dude. I want to hear them. I want to hear them. You're holding out, and I don't like it. Uh, Michael Ralston, thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Uh, Jesse, girlfriend of Ed's, great friend, reaches out almost every show. We have a phenomenal conversation. I'm going to try and get her on the show. Jesse, thank you as well. Rihanna, thank you. Her and her hubby, great people. Have some great conversations. Thank you so much. Love the support. And then now, joining... The UFO No Army is Carlton Turner, bruh. Thank you so much. Uh, reach out, man. I want to. I want to know something about you. So uh, reach out. Let me know. But uh, you too could be a part of the UFO No Army. Again, Patreon.com/slash UFO No Podcast. Um, you get a bonus episode every week along with the main episode every single weekend. I'm going to be doing that, and then I'm going to be trying to add new things as we go along. Um, but uh, that's it. Hey, join us, please, won't you? And now for my general shout-outs, check out to uh, Black Coast. These are a killer band. you got to check them out. Uh, found them on Instagram. They gave me some shout-outs. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and they've got a, a merch brand, I believe, which is Wet Wired. Go check those guys out. Thank you so much for the shout-outs. It means a lot. And then, of course, Bob Sowen. Uh, thanks for commenting. Casey Leeski, my buddy. Thank you, sir. And then Matthew Morfitt. I got to give this guy a shout out because uh, he was uh, asked me to do an episode on Valiant Thor. So that's where they came from. And then he also gave me an idea to do something about the Galactic Federation, which we will talk about soon. I'm doing some uh, research on it right now. Uh, everyone who's bought merch, you can go tag UFNO Podcast on the Instagram. Show me your sweet ass merch. I want to see it and then uh, build a portfolio of fans uh, to give you you guys shout outs because i love y'all um and then if you want to get a shout out let me know you listen to the show it's that easy go and donate to patreon or just hit me up on one of the many many areas that i'm on that you can do so um but it's that simple i want to thank my friend nate for coming on the show appreciate thank it so much my friend me, man it's a lot of fun it was so much thank you so much dude it it means a lot i mean it, it was a it was a blasty blast great conversation i hope to do it again my friend Oh, anytime, buddy. Yeah, we're going to do it. Uh, where can the people follow you? Do you have some socials that you want to uh, You want to have some people? Honestly, not at the time right now. Uh. <laughs> well, let me just tell you something. If you see a tall drink of water walking your way, just give him a hug and assume it's Nathan. 
Just give him a, just assume, just be like, dude, I love the episode. You'll find him. You'll find the right guy eventually. <laughs> just start. Just start. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much, dude, for being on the show. I really mean it. It, it was a blast. All right. Thank cool. you very much, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. For all the rest of you out there, appreciate you joining another episode of UFO No Podcast. We're doing this weekly, so make sure and join. Otherwise, that is it for me. And uh, as I always say, keep your eyes to the skies and watch out for the government. They're shoisty bastards.